Let's take the Tamers from Digimon Tamers and turn them into Gym Leaders. Hey everyone, Brandon here. And yes, we have yet another installment of giving Digimon characters their own gym leader teams. If you missed the previous two videos we did on this, where we did the Digi Destined from Digimon Adventure and Digimon Adventure Zero Two, make sure to go check that out right here. But this video wouldn't be complete without our partner in crime, Carney X. <laughs> Brandon, I thought we talked about this. No more summoning me. No, you said no more teleporting you through portals. This time I just teleported you here. <sighs> Whatever, I guess. More gym leader teams? More gym leader teams. All right. Let's get to it then. Before we get into the Tamers teams, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos. And you know the drill by now, there will be a video over on Karn's channel, which will be the inverse of this, where he will be giving the Hoenn gym leaders their own Digimon partners. So make sure to go check that out. All right, so to start us off is Henry. For Henry, we have chosen the normal type. And I tried to avoid similarities between him and Willis's team from the previous video, but some overlap was inevitable given they have the exact same Digimon partner. So starting Henry's team would be Diggersby, which is a visual reference to Gargamon. Visually, these two just match up very well and have the same kind of gruff rabbit aesthetic. And I know, Terriermon is supposed to be a dog and not a rabbit. So for Henry's next team member, we have Stoutland. The Stoutland line is based on Yorkshire Terriers and Scottish Terriers. So this perfectly reflects the Terrier part of the Terriermon line. The combo of Stoutland and Diggersby encapsulates the whole idea of Terriermon looking like a lop rabbit, yet being a dog Digimon. I did both, so ha, huh, comments section, you got nothing on me. Ooh, yikes. Next up would be Sinchino. Its general appearance reflects the cuteness of Terriermon, with its big ears and scarf-like fur referring to how Terriermon will sometimes cuddle up with its ears like a scarf or blanket. Henry's ace would be Beware. This refers to how Henry's sister Susie treats Terriermon like a stuffed animal, with Stuffle being inspired by teddy bears and its name coming from stuffed and full. Also, Beware's face kind of looks like the shoulder cannons on Mega Gargamon, kinda. Rika, we decided, will be a fire-type gym leader. You could definitely make a case for her being a fighting type gym leader or maybe even a psychic one, but I think fire Pokemon overall fit Rika best. Her team would consist of Nine Tails, a pretty easy reference to her Cubimon, both being a reference to the Cubi no Kitsune, a legendary fox in Japanese mythology. Then she would have a Salazzle. This is a bit of a jokey pick as Renamon is very popular in the furry community and Salazzle is Salazzle. Plus it just adds some diversity to Rika's team while keeping a feminine but strong aura. Her third Pokemon will be Flareon, again for variety, but also to tie into the quadrupedal evolutions in Renamon's line, like Viximon and Cubimon. And finally, Rika's ace will be Delphox. Another type of fox, admittedly the Fennec this time, to keep the fox and kitsune elements we have threaded throughout, but also to add in some mystical slash spiritual elements of the rest of Renamon's Digivolution line. The Tau and Shinto powers of specifically Taumon and Sukuyamon, I think finding some common ground with the European witchcraft of Delphox. Sukuyamon and Delphox also both get their names from prominent female spiritual figures, the Konohana Sakiyahime and the Oracle of Delphi, respectively. Next, we have Henry's sister, Susie. Susie was a tough one because she has Terriermon's counterpart, Lopmon, for her partner Digimon. And with the normal type being taken by Henry, we had to get creative with her team. So we decided to go with the fairy type to reflect her general bubbly demeanor and her love of all things cute and cuddly. Starting off, Susie's team would be be Wigglytuff. This pick is a visual homage to the good forms of Entilamon and Cherubimon. The coloration fits and Wigglytuff is inspired by moon rabbits from Chinese folklore. Next on her team would be Clefable. This pick is for the exact same reasons as Wigglytuff. I mean, I said picking her team was hard, okay? Clefable is actually an additional reference to Susie treating Terriermon like a stuffed animal, because Clefairy is the basis of the Poke Dolls, which are seen throughout the Pokemon franchise. After that would be Dedenne. Lopmon and Dedenne share some visual similarities, and Bonnie from the X and Y anime, who has a Dedenne for her partner, kind of serves the same role as Susie does in Tamers, so there's a tenuous connection there. Susie's ace would be Togekiss. Okay, so hear me out. Kokomon and Lopmon have three horns. The entire Togepi line also has three horns. That's all I got. Did I mention that it was hard to pick her team? Coming in next with Jerry, she will be a ghost type gym leader. Don't get mad at me, you knew this was coming. Yes, spoilers for Digimon Tamers, a show which, by the way, is 21 years old at this point, you've had time to watch it. <laughs> Jerry's Leo 
Leomon and Mum, to be fair, oof, both die in that season, and the D Reaper creates some truly ghastly imagery using Jerry and her puppet, so I think it makes sense she would be a ghost type gym leader. But if you're gonna blame someone, blame Brandon for that harshness. <laughs> As such, we have given Jerry a Mimikyu, this matching the puppet she uses throughout the season, and of course that one iconic terrifying scene with said puppet. Then Rotom, this electric ghost type referencing how when Leomon dies, Jerry's Digivice screen turns to static, the connection between her and Leomon severed, leaving at most a ghost in the machine. Then to double down on that sadness, she will have Hisui and Zoroark as a direct reference to her Leomon. Zoroark is also based on the Kitsune, like Ninetales, so it's not a lion, but I think there is a close enough bestial connection for this to work. In addition to the fact that, well, Hasui and Zoroark and Leomon are both kinda dead. And finally, her ace will be Hisui and Typhlosion, keeping that theme from Hisui and Zoroark going, but also as Typhlosion is a third stage evolution, Zoroark being a second stage evolution, we could consider this an allusion to the Grap Leomon and Saber Leomon Jerry's Leomon could become on the D-Power version 3 Digivice, but sadly never became in show. Wow, what a sad set of picks that was. <laughs> After Jerry, we have Kenta, whose partner Digimon was Marine Angemon. So for him, we are going to play into the Marine part of his partner's name and give him the Water type. Kenta's team was probably the easiest to pick because water-based Digimon and water type Pokemon generally pull from the same inspirations. So my explanations for each of these will probably be a little simple. So for Kenta's first team member, we have Lantern, which is the closest thing we have to a Dolphin Pokemon. So of course this refers to Dolphmon, the champion level form of Marine Angemon. Next up would be Waylord, which of course refers to Whamon, the ultimate level Digimon of the Marine Angemon line. They're both whales. Next up is Loma Mola. This is a visual homage to Marine Angemon. Other options that could have worked for this are Love Disc, Gorbis, Frillish, and Milotic. Any of those Pokemon could work for this slot, but we ultimately decided Loma Mola was the closest. For Kenta's ace, we have Empoleon, which is a reference to Marine Angemon's rookie form, Penguinmon. Like I said, water Pokemon and water Digimon are pretty one-to-one. -one. And then we have Kazu, whose Digimon partner is Gardramon, a former Andramon, so he of course will be a Steel-type gym leader. His team would consist of Togedemaru to match up with Kapurimon, the pretty much de facto Metal Empire in training Digimon, but specifically to Kazu, Gardramon de Digivolve to Kapurimon after the D Reaper was defeated, and Kapurimon as well as all the other Digimon were forced to return to the digital world. Then Kling Klang, a pretty clear parallel to Gardramon's rookie Hagoramon. We chose Kling Klang over its pre-evolution just because it would make sense for the likely levels that Kazu's gym team would be at. Then we'll have Durant as a reference to another prominent Gardramon pre-evolution, Kakuamon, but a Kakuamon did also show up in Digimon Tamers Battle of Adventurers. I will say very briefly that it is a huge shame that Golet and Golurk are not at least partly steel type because they would be such a good Gardramon reference, but we're sticking to the typings of the gym here. We're not deviating. And finally, his ace will be Magnazone. It has some visual evocation of Hagoramon, but also has a similar bulk to Gardramon. It might seem a little odd, but it really is our best pick, I think. Regular gym leaders, aka like not rematches or appearances outside of their gym, like Black and White 2, or like anime and manga appearances, tend not to have mythicals or legendaries on their team. If they did, I would very much so like to use Melmetal in this case, I think acting as a good steel type Pokemon, and also being a kind of similar visual matchup to Gardramon and kind of even Andromon, I guess. But Magnazone works well in its stead. After Kazu, we have Ryo, whose partner Digimon is Cyberdramon, and he would be a dark type gym leader. This generally fits the vibe of him and his partner Digimon. As a sort of honorable mention, we have Alice, who could also serve as the dark type gym leader, but Ryo is more of a major character in Tamers than she is, so. But Alice would of course have a Houndoom on her team to reference her Dobermon. But to start Ryo's team, we would have Sableye. This is a visual homage to Monodramon, Cyberdramon's rookie form. They are both that kind of faded bluish purple, and Monodramon even has a sort of gem-like protrusion on its forehead. After that would be Bisharp, which reflects Justamon almost perfectly, as well as it also shares some visual similarities with Cyberdramon, mainly the coloration and the whole protruding metal thing going on. Next would be Crocodile. It's a large bipedal dark reptile. I think this fits as a description for Cyberdramon, Cyberdramon's champion level form, and Crocodile. 
So there's that. Rio's ace would be Hydreigon. It's a dark dragon Pokemon. How can I not feature it on his team? This is, of course, a reference to Cyberdramon and Devidramon, with them all having those kind of tattered wings and general dark aesthetic. Now that I'm thinking about it, it'd be kind of cool to see Cyberdramon Digivolve in, rather than Justamon into like more of like a techie dark version of Hydramon rather than that plant aesthetic it has. It could have more of like a like a dark metallic drag, like 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 metal Hydramon or something like that. I thought would be cool. I'm just saying that would be freaking sick. And then we have Takato, who of course would continue the traditions of Goggleheads and be a dragon type gym leader. His team will be quite straightforward with visual homages to the Gilmon line, but we'll begin with Turtonator, who is a Gogglehead staple in these videos at this point, and of course also a fire dragon turtle. Its turtle inspiration doesn't really match up to anything in the Gilmon line, but I do think there are some similarities between the black spikes on its back and the digital hazard. Plus, Gilmon likes food, uh, Turtonator is possibly a dragon fruit. Can you feel these straws being grasped? <laughs> then Takata will have a Drodagon, which visually resembles Gilmon, at least with its headpiece. And interestingly, its shiny form has a yellowy orange headpiece, which matches up really nicely with the yellow Graumon variant. Then Takata will have Tyrantrum for our closer Graumon reference, both being red and having what appears to be white fur around their necks. Then, and finally, Takato's ace will be Garchomp to match up with War Growlmon. While not the same colour palette, they both have large arm blades and sort of fins on their back, which adds to their mobility and combat prowess. Garchomp and War Growlmon also have name etymology inspired by ancient creatures, specifically their Japanese names. Garchomp's Japanese name is Gabarias, coming from Gabu meaning bite, and Karkarius, a type of prehistoric shark. And then War Growlmon's Japanese name is Megalograumon, coming from Growl and the Megalosaurus, a genus of large carnivorous dinosaurs. I think the only thing we're really missing from Takato's team is a reference to Megidramon and Gallantmon. The sort of night Pokemon aren't dragon types, unfortunately. And for Megidramon, we have like Charizard, which also isn't a dragon type. <laughs> Lastly, as a sort of honorable mention, we have Ai and Mako, who are Impmon's tamers, who we will be giving Tate and Liza's team because twins. And those are all the teams for the characters from Digimon Tamers. Let us know if you agree with our picks or what you would have done differently. Differently. And if you enjoyed this video, please do come and check out my video, where me and Brandon will be giving the Hoenn Gym leaders Digimon partners with full Digivolution lines. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos on this channel. And with that, we, we will, will see you guys, guys next time. time.